What's up everyone, Ebert here with Hardware Connects, and I just got back from the OnePlus 60 launch event here in New York City. And overall, my first impressions with this device is that I'm not really I'm not really excited about it because uh, this whole cycle, you know, the whole cycle refresh every year with OnePlus is a little confusing because it all started with the 3, then we had the 3T, then we had the 5, the 5T, the OnePlus 6, and now we're on to the 60. It's their second uh, flagship smartphone for 2018 uh, that's technically replacing the OnePlus 6. And just looking at the feature standpoint, it's again, not a significant upgrade over the OnePlus 6, just like the 5 to the 5T. All right, so some of the minor changes with the OnePlus 60 is that they've eliminated the rear-facing fingerprint sensor on the back, and they've replaced that with a fingerprint sensor built inside the display. So they call it screen unlock. Essentially, there's a sensor built inside the display, and it, it's, a more uh, it's a more intuitive way of unlocking the device. It's, I mean, OnePlus claims to be the fastest way to unlock your device, although that's something to be validated scientifically. Hopefully, someone will be able to do that, but uh, I'm certainly looking forward to testing that out when I get my hands on with the device. Next up, we have a very slight improvement in the display department. So it's a 6.4 inch AMOLED screen with a tiny, I guess a drop notch, if you wanna call it a minuscule notch, you can call it whatever you like it, but I actually kind of like the way how OnePlus has implemented the notch on the 6D because it looks very subtle, very sleek, it's not as bad as the one found in the Pixel 3 XL. I would hands down pick the OnePlus 6D over the Pixel 3 XL any time of the day because the notch is just, it's bearable. It's not super, it's not, you know, staring at your face or anything like that. So I certainly like that approach. But uh, other than that, you're getting a slightly, you know, slimmer uh, chin at the bottom. So overall, it's not a significant upgrade over the six, but it's again, something, I guess it's a subtle look that I'm sure most people would appreciate. Now, one of the cool things that OnePlus did mention during their presentation is that they're actually allowing users to independently uh, calibrate their displays. So if you want a super saturated look, you can certainly go for that. Or if you're looking for a more natural presentation on your display, you can opt for that option as well. Uh, we're all aware of the different color profiles that are built inside OnePlus smartphones. So again, giving users the option to fine tune and adjust uh, and calibrate their displays uh, is pretty awesome. Now, specs wise, it isn't a massive improvement over the OnePlus 6. So you're getting the exact same Snapdragon 845 processor with uh, six gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM, depending on the storage configuration or the model that you're going for. Uh, I do wanna mention that they have increased the battery capacity on the 6D. So it has improved from 3,300 milliamp hours to 3,700 milliamp hours. So that's definitely gonna increase battery life on the OnePlus 6D. So that's definitely something that I'm looking forward to testing. And I think that's about it. You don't get things like a wireless, you don't get things like wireless charging, which I was kind of disappointed about because I was expecting that uh, on the OnePlus 60, simply because it's the one feature that I really wish this phone to have. But um, uh, what really threw me away was the removal of the headphone jack, because I really hoped that they would keep that, but unfortunately they have removed it on the OnePlus 60, which is really a bummer. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you guys would agree with me on that. But if you have embraced wireless audio, then this shouldn't be a concern at, for you at all. But let me know in the comments down below if you prefer to have the types, um, the headphone jack or not. So um, again, it's a big bummer. But interestingly enough, this is something that I noticed is uh, apparently they've replaced the headphone jack with a fake speaker grill. And I just, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. My, I was completely stunned when I, um, when I learned about that because it just, it's just so weird about that because I really wish if they actually gave us two uh, bottom facing speakers and the most interesting part is uh, the speakers are not stereo. So it's just a single mono uh, facing speaker at the bottom, which is again, very unfortunate. Moving on to the cameras and honestly, it's the exact same hardware as the OnePlus 6. They're using the same Sony IMX sensors. The one thing that they really wanted to focus on, uh, focus on was to improve the low light performance on the OnePlus 60. And they've done that by implementing Nightscape, which is a fine tuned algorithm that detects night scenes and it fine tunes and adjusts so that you're getting vivid and sharp results without a lot of noise uh, with the images. Again, that's something that I certainly have to test out when I get my hands on with this device. But interestingly enough, they did mention that Nightscape will be rolled out as an update to existing OnePlus 6 users. So it's not like a major upgrade. And lastly, I just wanna quickly go over software. So the OnePlus 60 is rocking Oxygen OS, running on top of Android Pie. 
Uh, so you are ex pretty much getting a stock Android experience with a few more customization options that Google doesn't really offer. So if you really want to fine tune within the settings and make it feel your, if you want to really personalize it your way, you can certainly do that with the OnePlus 60 or just pretty much any OnePlus devices that are currently out there running uh, Oxygen OS. Last but not least, there's the price. So the OnePlus 60 is starting at 549 USD and for that you get a six gigabyte model with 120 gigabytes of storage. Uh, it, the phone comes in two finishes, so you get mirror black and midnight black. I really like the midnight black variant just because it's a more matte black finish and it's more understated and it doesn't look as uh, glossy as the mirror black finish. Again, um, personal preference here, but um, I'm actually really happy with the price point here because at 549, I think you're getting a, it's, it's priced so competitively well uh, in the smartphone market right now because if you really wanna get the best Android experience, you don't have to spend 600 uh, or you know 700 dollars or even a thousand dollars for that you can certainly get that with something like the oneplus 60. although i'm still bumped about a few features that they were able to remove with the oneplus 60 particularly the headphone jack it's just something that i didn't see coming but um honestly um it is what it is but i'm going to chime in dimitri here for a second so that he can talk about his experience using the oneplus 6 for the past six months ever since the launch of that particular device just so you can get a rough idea on how that device has been holding up. Thank you, Eber. Hope New York is treating you well because the OnePlus 6 has been treating me so well for the past six months. Uh, this has been my daily driver ever since launch and I couldn't be happier. This is my favorite uh, Android device uh, to date. And it's so funny because when the OnePlus 6 came out, we were already joking about the eventual 6T release because that upgrade cycle is just too short to be six months, but you kind of get into the mindset of uh, OnePlus and them kind of thinking like Apple, like. OnePlus 6 owners will probably not be upgrading to the 6T, but the OnePlus 5 or OnePlus 3 owners will be. So that upgrade is definitely looking to be a much bigger jump. I've always experienced some form of bugs with OnePlus devices, but this one's no different. Uh, the most recent one, which keeps on repeating, is the alert slider. So when it's uh, in do not disturb, and when I switch it back to normal, uh, there's like a couple of seconds until all the notifications just come rushing in. And it's not like the notification hasn't come through, it's just the, the audio comes through, even though I've already received the notification, so that's really annoying. The fingerprint scanner has gotten kind of slow where I have to physically press into it instead of lightly tapping like I had to on the fresh device. And uh, for the price, the OnePlus 6 is just like an amazing value and all around really good performer. And I would compare it to my 10S, which is super fast, but I prefer the speed of the OnePlus 6. And that says something about Oxygen OS. And the 6T obviously is going to just fly right through. But in terms of speed and the button tactility, the display, the speakerphone, the headphone jack, everything has been working so fine. Uh, and the only thing that I would give feedback to OnePlus on the future is to uh, improve on the screen protector, the included screen protector, because on my red model, which looks, oh my God, it's so, so fire right now. And hopefully we'll see more colors than just two with a 6T. But the screen protector here that I used for video is just completely scratched up and uh, really poor quality. And I guess it's nice to be included, but the actual screen on the devices is pretty strong. Uh, it's much stronger than the really soft things that we see with the iPhones. And um, yeah, that's one uh, of my complaints for OnePlus. It is an exciting update, but why did they have to remove the headphone jack? I don't understand, especially when they were trolling Apple like two years ago, that they will still you know, keep the headphone jack, but I guess that is the trend now. And I really like that teardrop uh, you know, notch, or can you even call it a notch? It's a drotch. All right, Eber, so my experience with the OnePlus 6 has been super satisfactory, aside from uh, minor bugs here and there, like with notifications, which is odd. I don't know if it's uh, hardware-based or it's something on a software miscommunication there, but uh, hopefully we'll see all that stuff kind of like, you know, smoothed out with the fresh device with the OnePlus 6 T. The Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900 Revision 2 is here with a modern I.O. for your Type-C accessories and Qi charging gadgets. The new hub is good for eight fans and RGB strips, plus the interior is incredibly modular for airflow, water cooling, invert systems, and now with the power supply shroud. Check out the V2 down below. Well guys, that's the OnePlus 6T and honestly, it's not a major upgrade over the OnePlus 6. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys saw this coming eventually, uh, but Again, at 549, I think it's priced competitively because it competes 
really well with the Pixel 3, the Pixel 3 XL, because I feel like it offers a little bit more features compared uh, to those devices. But uh, nonetheless, what do you guys think about it? What do you guys think about the price point? And if you're an existing OnePlus 6 owner, would you actually upgrade to the 6T? Or if you're coming from something like the OnePlus 3, the OnePlus 3T, or even the OnePlus 5, um, is it something, or is the OnePlus 6T something that might be appealing towards you? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm Igor with 100 Connects. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.